Don't tell them where you sleep, don't tell them where you sleep or you're It's the dawn of a new era Time to leave Modkit behind and move on to one of my favorite programming languages, Robot C Robot C is a hybrid between C and C++ Like if you've done FRC, you know about C++ And it's what you'll use to code VEX EER robots Like Sting! If you're totally new to text-based programming languages, fear not We're gonna nail the Robot C basics down in this tutorial So that you can get your robot moving in no time I'm gonna be coding Sting, which we built in the last tutorial Big day for this robot Time to conquer Rainbow Road. You're gonna start by plugging in one end of your USB cord into the computer and then the other end into Sting's brain. Make sure your battery's strapped in and plugged in, then fire it up. Your robot doesn't need to be on when you download code, but if you want to. Okay, time to dive in. Let's go. Open up Robot C on your desktop. Let us begin by setting up our coding environment and settling it and making it home. First step is to let the program know how you're gonna be downloading code to the robot. In case you didn't know, all we're gonna be doing is writing a series of commands like go forward, turn left. When we download them to Sting's brain, the brain's gonna store the commands and then complete them when we turn it on on the challenge course. The way we're downloading code to Sting's brain is with a USB cable. So I'm gonna scroll over a robot, communication type, and I'm gonna pick USB only. Then we need to make sure that the program knows what type of robot system we're working with. I'm gonna go into the settings and select VEX Cortex. Okay, we're gonna open up a new code file. There are two motors that drive the left and right sides of Sting. They have wires that are plugged into the brain in ports one and 10. And what we're doing next is basically telling the program where the motors are plugged in so it knows where to send the power. We're gonna go down to motors and sensors, click on motors, and this is where we'll tell the computer where the motors are plugged in. Looks like the left motor's plugged into port one and the right motor's plugged into port 10. So where it says port one, I'm gonna name my motor left motor. You can name it whatever you want, as long as you know it's the left one. And for port 10, I'm gonna call it right motor. The motors that come in your kit are VEX 390 three motors. Now we're gonna reverse the left one and that might seem really freaking weird at first but it actually makes sense if you think about it this way. So to the robot brain forward means spin the wheel clockwise. So clockwise for the right wheel makes it spin forward but if you flip it around and look at the left side clockwise is actually backwards. So by reversing the direction of the left motor it's gonna go counterclockwise when it gets the forward command which will actually make it go forward. I'm gonna click apply and okay and Yes! Okay, so we see that two lines of code are generated. These lines of code tell the program where each motor is plugged in, which ones are reversed, what type of motor they are, all that good stuff. Code you'll be writing to tell your robot how to move will be right in here. Okay, so this is called your main function. It's the main part of your code. So between these two curly brackets is where the robot magic happens. Okay, first let's get it going forward. Okay, so basically I'm letting the computer know that the motor we called left motor is going to spin at full power. End your line with a semicolon. That's how the computer can tell that you're finished with the command. So for some reason, 127 is full speed ahead, zero is still and negative 127 is full speed backwards. For Rainbow Road, I end up doing about 80. Now I'm gonna add a comment. So comments aren't read by the compiler at all. The compiler knows to ignore it because of the double slashes here. So basically everything in green is ignored. It's a way to leave notes and document your code. If you want to comment with multiple lines, the easy way to do that is you can do slash asterisk and then the text and then close it off with asterisk slash. So now we're gonna add that exact same line of code except for the right motor. We have both motors spinning forward, but we wanna limit the amount of time that they're spinning forward so we can stop in time to turn or do whatever's next on the challenge course. This command, wait one msec, will determine how long the wheels spin for. So this command works in terms of milliseconds, thousand milliseconds is a second. We'll just start with something, I'm gonna do 2.5 seconds. To stop the robot after the wheels spin for that amount of time, you can do the exact same motor power commands for the left and right side, except set the power to zero. I'm gonna put a wait command after this for about a second so that the wheels have time to slow down and come to a complete stop before moving on to the next command. To turn, you can take this entire chunk of code and modify one of the motor power so that's negative. So if you want to turn left, you'd make the left side negative. If you want to turn right, you'd make the right side negative. Then you can experiment with speed on the turns, which I usually err on the slower side. Then you can mess around with the wait command until you get a perfect 90 turn. By the way, I like to put a one second pause at the beginning of my program. So that when I set up the robot on the challenge course and turn it on, I have a second to pull my hands away. Real quick, I'm gonna save the project and name it. So when we run the code, it's gonna read all these commands in order from top to bottom. Okay, I'm gonna start with perfecting this first distance and the turn. Like I really wanna make sure that I get the 90 degree turns perfect before I move on to the next part. So to test the code, make sure your robot's plugged into the computer and hit the download button. If you get a notification that you need to power cycle your robot, then just make sure it's off, unplug it from the computer, unplug the battery, then plug everything back in, the battery and the cord, and re-download. 
that's done downloading, you can go set it up on the course, line it up in a way you'll remember, turn the robot on, step back, and watch the magic happen. Actually, it probably won't be magic, it'll be trash, because it'll run into the wall somewhere, and then you'll have to edit it a thousand times. That's how it works. See what changes need to be made to the code, like if it needs to move forward more or less, or turn more or less, make the changes, and test it again.